Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Um, so the past couple of weeks we've been talking about highlights and shadows and um, so I'm just going to finish up on that topic today. We'll go over highlights and shadows. I'm also going to throw in here um, highlights and shadows and deform. So I'll go into how I'm going to rig the deform on the arm of this character, um, which I think is kind of going to be useful for you guys because I really didn't do that much on deform with you guys so far on tip of the week. We did an intro to deform, like a really quick deform. Uh, we did deforms when we did the head rig, like on the eyebrows and on the mouth. But now I'm going to do a deform on the arm so that I can show you guys how the highlights and shadows work in this case. So let's get started. So I'm just going to take this project, um, the same sort of avatar project that I've kind of been playing around with as I'm doing this. And so this is going to show you how a lot of studios will do things like highlights and shadows on characters. Now in this case, um, one of the ways that studios will do this is they'll have drawing layers and those drawing layers will be your highlight and shadow layer. And so instead of using the, well, you can still use the highlight and tone modules, but you can also just use a direct drawing layer connected into a cutter. So in other words, um, this is my shirt layer here. This is the drawing layer for the shirt. And then I've got a separate drawing layer here for the torso shadow. And the torso shadow is being cut off with the shirt. So in other words, I'm saying it's inverted, of course, like we do with all these types of cutters. So in other words, I'm saying take the torso shadow here and cut it off so that it only shows where the shirt is. And this torso shadow layer is just a drawing layer. Like if we look at it in our drawing view, it's just a drawing layer. And it's filled in with a color. That's the color that I want my shadow to be. You could equally in here as well put your highlight and tone module. But for, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to show how you can do it with a flat color but you could do this just as easily by using the, the highlight and shadow properties as well and then you can have the highlight and shadow cut off well I guess it would cut automatically there but you could actually animate the real important thing about the way that we do this with a cutout character isn't whether it's a drawing layer with a cutter or whether it's a highlight and tone the important thing to remember or to realize is you can actually have the shadow be different drawing layers so in other words, I've got on my character here a drawing layer for the side of the shirt that you know I can use to, to put the shadow on the side. I've put a drawing layer for the top of the shirt there for the, for the uh, shoulder. And as, as you're animating, you can kind of just adjust the position of this. So you know if you're actually, now I'm not sure how far I got in the rigging of this uh, character here. Don't think I got uh, terribly far. So okay, so I did do I did do kind of a label thing here. So um, so if you animate the position of that um, of that shirt layer around from one side to the other side, you can go in there and actually adjust the position of the shadow with the animation that you've done. And that's the real strength of doing it this way. So instead of it being imprecise, it's not imprecise at all. In fact, it's extremely precise because each shadow can be adjusted on its own. And then what you can do is you can sort of make these shadows match whenever you do the adjustments. And it might sound like that's a lot of work. It is a little bit more work. I'll be honest, it's a little bit more work than it is with the way that I showed you guys last week. But what's nice about it is it's really flexible. So you see here, um, I just kind of like I still have this animation that I did when I did the head rig on there. And um, but but you can see how I did a little bit of an animation on the shadows there just now and that it looks quite good. You do probably want to make these shadows match up a little bit so it's, um, it's nice as well when you're creating these shadow layers uh, whether you're using a peg layer or whether you're just going to animate on the shadow layer directly if you set the pivot point in a good place it's going to make it a little bit easier for you and you can even rotate those shadows just to make them match even more um, than they do already so you just go in and rotate those like so and then we just adjust this one up a little bit like that and now if I take a look at that animation see how those shadows are following each other very nicely so that's the main concept to get at here when you're doing shadows on a cutout character what's best is or I shouldn't say it's best because both ways are valid but if you want to have more control over what you're doing with the shadows then you can make each shadow a separate layer and you can either use your highlight and tone module to have that cut with the character 
or you can have that just be using your cutter with the invert option on and then you can cut that with the other drawing layer that it's um, that it's going to use. So, so either the highlight and tone module or the cutter, both of those will work. Just to finish up on this topic though, I said I would do a little bit of deform here because I've got this arm and this arm is just one straight layer and I had planned to do this with deform but I hadn't actually done it yet. So I thought we do it really quick with you guys so you can see how it's done. So I've got my arm layer there. I can take my arm and I can use my rigging tool and setup mode and then I can just go in there and click, click, click to create my rig. So very similar to what I've been doing with all the other deform tutorials that we've done. Now while I'm still in setup mode I can go in there with my transform tool and I can adjust the size of that articulation. Remember we want that to be about the same size as the width of the drawing so that we get a nice clean uh, movement there. And now I'm done with my deform. So um, I just want to select my deform group there and do that copy resting position to current to copy what I did back to the main rig. Leave setup mode and now I can try it out. I can go in here and I can move this around. So it's moving the arm nicely. Um, you know, you can you can deal with that fold um, if you want to. I, I can do that in a different uh, in a different demonstration here. But the real thing that I wanted to show though is if I have this setup where I have the shadows being on different layers, I want my shadow also to follow the movement of my of my arm there. And it's really easy to do that. Um, you know that what happens when you create these rigs, these deform rigs is it creates these groups and inside the group is the rig itself. But what I can do is I can just say apply the same deform by dragging the pipe out, apply the same deform also to your shadow layer. And as soon as you do that, poof, the shadow is coming along with it. And the shadow is also being deformed with it. There are two ways that you can sort of share a deform. One of them is if you pull the pipe out directly, it will have the other drawing layer come along with the deform, like it's going to move with the deform, and it will be deformed in exactly the same way, which is what we want here with the arm. But we don't want the hand to be deformed, so I can't just take the hand and drag it out there. I can, but you might notice some small variations in what the hand looks like. The hand could get warped. So rather than letting the hand get warped, the last thing we can do here is select that deform group, and then there's an option there that says create kinematic output. And what the kinematic output is, is the kinematic output is just a way that you can connect in a layer, like the hand, that you want to follow the movement, but you don't want it to actually be deformed by it. So if, if instead I had connected the shadow with this port, do you see the difference? The shadow is moving along with um, with that movement of the arm, but it's not being deformed with it. So hopefully that's really clear. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the hand is using the left port, the kinematic output port, but you want to make sure that the shadow is sharing the same deform as the arm. And now that you do that, you've got your shadow layer and you're able to bend your arm and the shadow layer will come with it. And if you have a, a peg there on your shadow layer, you can still go in there and make some adjustments on the peg on top of it or on top of the deform movement. You could even, you know, rotate this guy, probably put your pivot in a, in a place that makes more sense, you know. So I might want to just um, take my advanced animation toolbar there and I can just take my rotate tool and I can pop my pivot point of my shadow layer maybe to where the shoulder is. So that might make more sense. And so then I can always go in here and just adjust the shadow as I want to on there. So um, the steps here are you want to put the deform first on the arm. Then you also want to apply the deform to the shadow layer. But it's handy to have an extra peg layer there on top so that you can make some minute adjustments to the shadow as necessary if you want to just make things look a little bit nicer there. And, um, and then you want to select your group, create the kinematic output, and that's the one that you'll use to have anything that is a drawing layer that you want to have come with the movement but not be deformed. So the hand is a great option of that. So that's wrapping up our discussion here of Highlights and Shadows. Hopefully this series has been really useful for you guys. I know that 
Um, there were quite a few people who wanted to know what could be done with the highlights and shadows, so um, I think that I covered pretty much all the different angles. And um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Talk to you guys next week. Bye.